Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this pen. An airmail pen. This is... I forget the name. This is an airmail 444. How can I forget that? Well, never mind. Um, the airmail 444. Um, I think this is a very interesting pen. I got this from fountainpenrevolution.com and um, interesting thing about this, it has two interesting features. First of all, it's an eyedropper. This is a lot of ink, because it's ink in there. It's Noodler's Base State Blue. That's right, Base State Blue. Second thing that's interesting is that this comes with a flex nib. Fountain Pen Revolution now stocks flex nibs, uh, which are of matte metal uh, finish, a slit that runs very deeply down the nib, and no breather hole. Um, I already reviewed an airmail Wality 71JT, I think was the, the model number. That's the bigger version of this, but this in itself is not a small pen. Um, here I got the, the Surwex MB. That's not a particularly small pen. Uh, what would you know? What have I got here? Okay, so this is an Edison Persimmon Swirl Collier. Collier. I still can't pronounce it. Collier. That's definitely bigger, but it's it's not small. I like this size. Um, because the, the 71 J, yeah, JT that I talked about before, um, that's bigger. That's really that's like an Ahab sized pen. This is more of a nice everyday carrying size. I like that. I think these caps come in a bunch of colors, so you can pick one that you like. The barrels are clear, which is nice for an eyedropper, I think, so you can see how much ink is left, but it's also just fun to, to see the ink in there. And that's all there's to it. So I'll cover the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll, I'll do a writing sample. So, on top of the cap, there's a sort of pyramid, diamond-shaped thing, black, like plastic, I think. You have the clip, a fairly small clip. I kind of like that design. I think it's, it's pretty nice. Um, Gold-colored, it says airmail on the clip. Um, clip is nice and springy, tight enough to keep it in place. A nice sort of mottled finish on the cap. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I think it's it's pretty nice. One gold ring. Is that real gold? What do you think at this price level? Um, but it looks okay. It doesn't look tacky. I, I again I, I, I like this pen model quite a lot. Then on the barrel it says in gold lettering airmail. I could keep this closer to you but you I know the camera won't focus but believe me it says airmail. Screw off the cap. Reveal the feed. The nib as I said is sort of matte metal. The section has the same mottled finish as the cap. I like that. I probably should have put in a green ink because that would match more with the cap and the barrel, but, you know. Threads here feel pretty sharp. But when I hold it, the section is big enough for me, for my fingers, not to touch the threads. And even if I were to hold it at the threads, for some reason they're not that sharp. Only the, the very last one is, is a bit sharp, but even that could work, because I tend to hold my pens a little highly, like this. No problem. I like that. Okay. Well, there's no converter or, you know, other uh, ink mechanism. It's just, you know, you take an eyedropper, you fill the barrel with ink, and that's it. Then you screw the thing back together. There's already some grease on the threads, but you can always add some more, of course. A rubber O-ring is not necessary, so it's a very, very simple design. Um, you know, no moving parts, not, nothing that will really break down, you know, no, don't know how to replace it. It's just, you know, a self-contained writing unit. I like that. Okay, what about the nib and the feed? Well, that's the issue. Um, I already explained that in another review, but I'm, at this point I'm not sure whether I've uploaded that already because I always forget the order in which I should upload stuff. This pen, when you use it for everyday writing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that right now, sorry I'm not looking at the camera, but I want to make sure that what I'm telling you is absolutely correct. Um, for everyday writing, this pen is going to be fantastic. I, I, I haven't had it skip a single time. Uh, I don't think there were any hard starts or anything. 
when you start to flex, if you flex a little bit, I show you this in the writing sample, but I mean, I just just doing this online to, to verify that what I'm saying is true. When you flex it a little bit, it's going to be fine, just fine. When you flex it to the max, you may get some railroading. If you don't know what that is, it's easiest to show you. It's that. So what you end up with instead of one broad line is two narrow lines because the feeds open up, uh, sorry, the, the tines of the nib open up, but instead of filling this inner part with ink, they don't. So you just get two thin lines. That is only when flexing to the max. With a little bit of flex, at least, I was just using this very cheap note paper, um, no issues. So if you want an everyday writing pen that gives you a little bit of flex, you need this. If you want something, if you're an artist, you want to flex to the very max and pref preferably at a high speed of, of writing or drawing, this pen may not be ideal. Now, there are things you can do. Kevin, the owner of, of FountainPenRevolution.com, has uploaded on uh, YouTube, I think his name is India Kevin, uh, has uploaded a video on how to widen the channel, actually, I think, deepen the, the channel uh, the channels on the feed. Uh, these are ebonite feeds, very easy to work with, just take a sharp knife, carefully run it through the channels in the feed, uh, you'll deepen them a bit, and usually that will increase ink flow a bit. Um, when you have another pen, like this one, by Sir Wax, this is another one of their, their flex pens, I mean by, by Funnel Pen Revolution. Um, what I usually do is I just push some ink in, so if I need to flex to the max, I just twist the piston turning knob, you see that big drop of ink right there? Not sure how well you see that, but it's it's there. Then I draw it in again. And then when you write, carefully you don't get a drop of ink on the paper, but then when you write, the feed is really saturated with ink. Now that's very easy, but this pen is an eyedropper, so there is no mechanism you can use to, to push ink into the feed. I've already widened the feed channels a bit, and that seemed to work. I may widen them a bit more. Just, you know, take it slow, check your results, take it easy. It's not difficult. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to do that. All you need is a fine, sharp knife, some patience, some, some time to work, and, and it's probably going to increase ink flow. I think one of the things is that this feed doesn't have any fins on the other side. That, I think, tends to increase ink flow, but it, it's, it's just, this is what you get. It works, but for extreme flexing, it may be an issue. That's all I'm saying. Clearly, that will also depend on the paper. It will depend on the ink. This is Newton's Base State Blue. In this pen, by you know, that's sold by my Final Pen Revolution. Um, the only reason I keep mentioning the, the the name is that that's where I got the pens, and you know, these people give good service, so I'm not affiliated with it or anything. Um, this one had no railroading issues. Um, different feed, but also a different ink. Noodles X Feather seems to work very well in flex pens. Base Dead Blue, maybe not so suited. I'm not sure. I have to do more tests. So that's all there's to it. Um, I think this is a very nice, decently shaped pen, decently sized pen. You can post it if you want, then it's pretty big. Um, it's a lot of talking. We need a writing sample. So that's all there's to it. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Airmail 444. Airmail 444. Nib is flex, ink is noodless base state blue, and the paper is Rhodia. Everyday writing. Writing is smooth. I don't really feel any scratch. I do feel a little bit of feedback. But I don't think it's an annoying feedback. I think it's pretty nice. A fairly even. Nice patch of ink. Reasonably wet. Fast writing, quick brown. This is not even writing. No real skipping. Looks pretty good to me. Now when we flex, what happens? Because that's what you're interested in. I know that's what you're interested in because it's a flex nib. That looks pretty good to me.
that's pretty impressive. I was writing fairly quickly. There was no railroading. Now we get a little bit of railroading. I can do this for quite a while before I start getting railroads. You see that? So that means that it's a pretty decent feed. I like that. I worked on the feed a little bit. I widened the, the channels a bit, made them a little deeper. Uh, so that's something you have to bear in mind, but I, I, it's very easy to do. You can do that. And even if you've never done it before, you can do that. Um, and then you get a very nice pan. Now, if you're doing just a little bit of flex, I think you don't even have to slow down. If you want to do a lot of flex, uh, that was pretty much full speed writing. So that's, that's really impressive. Uh, if we compare that to the Cervex 162 with the same nib, It writes, no, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> you see there you got some serious issues straight away. I put some extra ink into the feed. There we go. You see that you, you get you just get railroading. And I think it's the feed. Whereas with this pen, now it's probably not going to work now that I want to demonstrate this, but still. See, that's full speed writing, did the same as I did there. This one doesn't railroad, that one does. This could be the ink. It doesn't have to be the pen. Uh, this is Apache Sunset, this is Base State Blue. I think it looks, it works pretty well. Uh, you'll get some railroading at some points, but, you know, if you're willing to slow down a little bit, which is what you have to do with most flex pens anyway, you can get a very decent ink flow, I think. So, in all, I would say this is a very nice pen. I like the looks a lot. I like the nib a lot. Um, it's not expensive, so, you know, pretty cool. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.